In this lesson, we're gonna learn the last power rule. We're gonna take a look at how to simplify exponents by applying the power to a power rule. Before we do that, let's recap the other four rules we have learned. Our, the zero rule says anything raised to the power of zero is one. So let's take a look at this example. We have to be careful on this one because this negative is not attached to the three. So the base in this example is just three. The zero is only attached to the three. So we really have negative three to the zero and we end up with a negative one. If the negative and the three would have been inside parentheses raised to the power of zero, we would have got positive one. The negative rule says that if you have a negative exponent, you're going to reciprocate the factor to the opposite side of the fraction bar, meaning flip it to the opposite side of the fraction bar, and then make the exponent positive. So here we have a base of three raised to the negative two. We need to take this factor of three and move it to the denominator and make the two positive. And then we must put a one up top if there's nothing left there. Then we can simplify this and we have three times three, so we get one ninth. So three to the negative two is really one ninth. The product rule says if you are multiplying two bases that are the same, you can put this together by adding the two exponents. So I can go from one, two factors to one factor, I can simplify. So here we have an example, b to the fourth times b to the negative one. We have the same base, so we can combine these factors into one by adding the exponents. And we get b to the third. The quotient rule says if you are dividing bases that are the same, you can write that as one factor by subtracting the top exponent from the bottom, so the top minus the bottom. In this example, we have a base of w and we have three minus seven, which gives us negative four. Now we need to apply the negative rule so that we have a positive exponent. So we're gonna reciprocate the factor of W to the denominator and make it, make the four positive. So now let's talk about a power raised to a power. So here we have X raised to the power of M, which is all raised to the power of N. So we have a power raised to a power. So the rule says to multiply the exponent. So this outside exponent is multiplied by the inside exponent. So let's take a look at two examples and let's show why this rule is what it is. So here we have x squared raised to the power of 4. So if we start with the outside power, this is saying we have 4 x squares being multiplied. So I'm going to expand x squared four times. Now we have x squared that we can expand. So x squared is really x times x, x times x, and I expand each one of these. And now when I write this is one single factor, I have x to the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you can see that if we apply the rule, we would get our answer. Let's take a look at one more by expanding. So I have two squared raised to the power of three. So we have this two power of two raised to this power of three. So let's start on the outside and this is saying I have three two squares. So I have two squared times two squared times two squared. So I have three of those. Now let's expand each of these factors. And then when I write it as a single factor, I have two to the power of one, two, three, four, five, six. So we simply just multiply the exponents. So powers to a power, 
you multiply exponents. Okay, let's try these examples. Remember at any time during the video, if I go too fast, you can pause the video to write some things down. So we have a base of x raised to the power of zero, which is raised to the power of two. So we're gonna multiply two times zero, which is zero, and going back to the zero rule, anything raised to the power of zero is one. On this next problem, we have two factors raised to the power of three. So everything inside this parenthesis has its own exponent. So I'm going to go ahead and write in that understood one. So this outside power of three gets multiplied times everything by every exponent inside the parentheses. So writing in your understood one will help remind you that this three also is multiplied by this exponent of one. So we get two to the third times m to the sixth. We can go ahead and evaluate two to the third and get eight m to the sixth. On our next example, we have two factors being raised to the power of four. So this power of four is multiplied by every exponent inside the parentheses. So we get x to the negative eight, four times negative two, and we get y raised to the power of 12. Now we need to apply the negative rule so this gives us y to the 12th over x to the positive 8. Our last example together, we have one, two, three, four different factors. I'm going to include all my understood ones to remind me that I'm going to be multiplying this negative 3 times each of these exponents. So I have 2 to the negative 3. I have a to the negative 12. I have three to the negative three and b to the negative six. So I multiplied negative three times each of these exponents. Okay, now let's keep simplifying. This two to the negative three is gonna be flipped to the bottom and it also gives me a value of eight. This a to the negative 12 is gonna to flip to the bottom and become a to the positive 12. Then in the denominator, this three to the negative three we're gonna flip it to the numerator and multiply it by itself three times. It gives us 27. And b to the negative six flips to the top. So all of these exponents were negative, so they flip to the opposite side of where they started. Okay, now pause the video and then come back and we'll go over these together. Okay. On this number one, I'm going to write in my understood one on this base of two, and we get two to the third times a to the six, and we can simplify this eight a to the six. Number two, we have one, two, three factors we're going to multiply. So we have g to the twelfth over two to the six times f to the negative nine. So g to the 12th stays where it is. This two to the six stays in the denominator, but we can evaluate that to 64. f to the negative nine flips to the numerator and becomes a positive nine. Number three, let's write in our understood exponents. So we have six raised to the negative two, m raised to the negative two, and n raised to the positive six. So n to the six stays in the numerator, and we are gonna get, I'm gonna flip six to the negative two to the denominator, making it 36, and then m to the negative two comes to the denominator as well. Our last one, let's write in those understood ones. So we have four to the negative eight, excuse me, that's a mistake. I'm glad I caught this before I finish the video. Let's try that again. Negative two times one is negative two. So four to the negative two times a to the positive two because a negative times a negative is positive. 
Then we have b to the negative 6 and c to the negative 2. Okay, so let's move some things around. The only factor that is not going to have to be moved is the a squared. So 4 to the negative 2 moves to the denominator, becoming positive 16 because it's 4 times 4. a squared stays where it is. Now on the bottom, both of these factors are negative, so they're going to move to the top. And this is our final answer. Let's try two of these complex ones. Here we have powers raised to a power. We have the product rule that we're going to use. We have the quotient rule we're going to use. So before we apply the power to a power, let's simplify inside first. So here is how I am going to do it. In my numerator, I see that I can combine some f's. And when I say combine, I just mean apply the product. So this is f to the fourth times f to the first, which is really f to the fifth. So again, we're trying to compact our expression. On the bottom, I have e to the third and e to the negative two, and I'm going to use the product rule, and I'm going to add those exponents, so I get e to the first, and then I have f to the negative three. The next rule I'm going to apply is the quotient rule. So I have e and f all raised to the third. Now let's get our exponents. So the quotient rule says to subtract exponents. 4 minus 1 is 3. 5 minus negative 3. Let's write that out. 5 minus negative 3. Keep change change gives us 8. And now we can apply the power to a power rule. I have e to the ninth, And I have f to the 24th. Okay, let's try one more together. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I can apply the product rule, and I can. So I have 2m to the first, and here I can apply the product rule here, adding exponents. In my denominator, I can apply the product rule to the m's. So that's m to the negative fifth. Now I can apply the quotient rule. So I have 2m, 1 minus negative 5, keep change change, gives me an exponent of 6. And then I have my, fact, my end factor, 3 minus 8 gives us negative 5 raised to the power of 2. Now I'm going to apply the power to a power. I'm going to write in my 1 on the base of 2, and we're going to multiply 2 times 1 and 2 times the 6 and 2 times the negative 5. So we get 2 squared m to the 12th and n to the negative 10th. I want to evaluate 2 to the 2nd m to the 4, excuse me, m to the 12th stays where it is, and I want to flip this n to the 10th to the bottom, making it positive. Now pause the video and you try these. Okay, let's apply, see if we can apply here, we can apply the product rule here and the product rule here. So in the top, we're going to have a squared, 6 plus negative 4. In the denominator, we're going to have b to the fifth. And now we can apply the quotient rule. So I have a, and it's 2 minus negative 2. Keep change change, a to the fourth. And then I have negative 2 minus 5. Keep, change, change, I get negative 7 raised to the power of 2. Now the power to a power, multiplying by that exponent of 2. We have a to the 8th and b to the negative 14. 
apply the negative rule and we're going to reciprocate B to the denominator, making it positive 14. Number two, we can apply the product rule here and here. So we're going to add our exponents and get positive 2. We're going to add these exponents, negative 3 plus 8. Now we can apply the quotient rule. So we have 2 minus 4, which gives us negative 2. And we have 4 minus 5 gives us negative 1 raised to the power of 3. Now the power to a power, we're going to multiply the outside exponent to every exponent inside the parentheses, and we get k to the negative 6, p to the negative 3. Both of these need to be reciprocated, so we get 1 over k to the 6 and p to the 3rd. I hope this helps.